that's better. It's exactly the same, isn't it? Okay. Hey guys, my name is Victoria. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a video that I'm very insecure about, or I'm filming a video about a topic that I'm very insecure about. Because today you will be writing and reading and editing my poetry book with me, or just poetry in general. It's gonna be a long one, I think. There will be different parts to this video. I will talk about poetry a lot, what it means to me and what it is for me. Then I'm also gonna talk about writer's block because I currently have that and try to overcome that with a challenge that I set myself that I need you guys help with. I asked you guys on my Instagram if you could help me get out of my writer's block and I wanted you guys to send me prompts, situations that I should write about or just keywords that I should include in a poem and you guys have sent a lot and I'm a little bit overwhelmed right now um, not because of you guys' suggestions they're amazing and brilliant but poetry is something that I don't like to force and it's something that I can't just write like that it has to be in a good moment and if that's not a good moment today then I will just talk a lot about poetry but but there are certain moments on days at night or something that are really inspirational for me. There are just times where I write five poems a day and then there are weeks in which I don't write. That's just life. Because poetry is all about life and experiences and feelings and I sort of use poetry to heal and get to know myself and create art. I always say that poetry is like a painting with words. Um, I think that's very common. I think a lot of people use that expressions, but that's that's my favorite because in the end It's an art form that you are able to analyze and you are able to if it's a good poem interpret in millions of different ways but it's also something that you could just read aloud and Enjoy as it is. Let's talk about this for a second I know that for a lot of people poetry is really hard to understand this kind of art form is very intimidating to a lot of people because they think poetry Shakespeare oh god, I don't understand a thing and That's also the beauty of it, which I know sounds so strange I know everyone says oh, but it's confusing and I don't want things to be confusing I don't want to not understand things and that's the magic of it, I don't understand. Here's the thing, as I said, if you have a good poem and if you want to, you can analyze it for hours and hours on end and you can discuss it with your class. But as I said, poetry is like painting with words and do you analyze a painting immediately when you look at it? No, that's something for art class and if you really want to, but most of the time you look at a painting and you're like, I like this, or you say, I hate this. You can do that with poetry as well. You can read it aloud and actually hear if you hear a melody. And if you do, you can ask yourself, do I like this or do I not? Do I like the words that the poet, that the writer has used or not? It's not always about the meaning of a certain poem. Obviously, a poem should be built or made out of words that are specifically chosen. I can quickly decide if I like a certain kind of poetry or if I don't like it. For me, it's easy to look at the words and see, did the author, did the writer just randomly chose these words? to just bring the message across? Or did this writer show me a certain situation? Did they create a story with this? And most importantly, can I see that every word in this poem is important on its own and then within the poem has a magnitude? Or is it just random? That's also where I have my problems with this Instagram modern poetry. I don't like to call it Instagram poetry because I share my poetry on Instagram as well. But there has been a flood of this new kind of modern poetry going around for I think the past six years. Starting with Milk and Honey and then continuing till today with other artists like Atticus, Amanda Lovelace. People who write things that are very relatable and very accessible, which I love. Because as I said, poetry is something that can be quite intimidating and it can be something that not everyone is interested in and that's fine. But if you read these poems by these certain authors and you like it because you're able to understand it and you're able to relate to that, that's beautiful. That's amazing and that's the reason why I, for example, write. I like being able to relate to other people and I would love to give that back, you know, <laughs> if that makes sense. But the reason why I don't like that sort of poetry is because it's not poetry for me. I don't see any colors, I don't see any images, I don't see, I don't see anything when I read that certain poem. And there's a sort of problem of show and tell. Those are two very different things. And even though you tell someone something, especially if you read a poem, but there's a difference between blatantly tell them what you feel, what feelings you want to convey, or, or if there are ways to show you what the author is feeling. I hope you heard it, but there's a huge difference. A lot of modern poetry is blatantly telling you 
something. And a lot of these writers write about very important things, right? Poetry is life. Poetry is about love and heartbreak and pain and happiness and all the feelings that you feel, right? It's it's very cliche, it's very emotional, but some really use it to spread very important messages through writing about racism and hate and problems that we have in society today. And that is so important. But the issue is not what they're writing about. The issue is how they write it. And if that's the way that they want to write, that's fine. But I wouldn't really call it poetry. At least it's not for me. Let me just quickly get something. For example, I think it's beautiful the way you sparkle when you talk about the things you love. That's beautiful, right? That's a nice saying. But is it a poem? These feel like first drafts. These don't feel like thought out poems. Those are things that you say. That's just me talking to someone. I could tell that to you. I think it's beautiful the way you sparkle when you talk about the things that you love. This is like the interpretation of a poem. Do you get what I'm saying? Another one, let's take another one. The hardest step she ever took was to blindly trust in who she was. For me, this is a topic that I could write about. Someone who has always been scared of their own reflection or who has been struggling with themselves. Obviously, this girl apparently is struggling with herself. For her, the hardest thing to do is to trust herself. You can symbolize that with so many ways. You can talk about a girl standing in front of a very small river and she has to take that leap in order to reach the other side to continue her life to live the way that you that she really wants and then she takes that step and and smells the grass all around her or here's the platter of the water there is so much you can do with that and that is what i think is said about a lot of poetry nowadays is that it's not used enough the things that people write are interesting but what you can do with them because of editing are even more amazing i think that's enough for the talk right now so i've already been filming 20 minutes okay now Let's get into writing. I've been writing my poetry book for... How long? Almost two years. It's nowhere near done. And I don't want to spoil too much because maybe someday it's gonna come out and some people want to buy it, but I don't think that's gonna be the case. But anyway, I want to talk about this for a second. I think this is... I'm not gonna talk about too many of my poems because I'm really, really insecure. If you don't like my poetry, that's totally fine. I'm most of the time not sure if I even like it, so... Um, Please don't come at me if you find this is crap. Now, the first chapter in my book is quite dark because I wrote a lot about me not being able to handle things in my head and the things that my head was telling me. So a lot about mental health, but also a lot about struggling with yourself and um, yeah, feeling like Bonk. So I wrote about that and there was this one occasion where I talked to someone about me struggling with food and what I do every day and what I think about every day. And then this, this person said, you know that's not normal, right? And I said, huh? Isn't everyone thinking that? Because I genuinely did not know. So it was something that I was always annoyed by. And I was like, this is a negative. I don't want to do this all the time. But it is something I thought was normal. And I thought it wasn't, it, I thought it wasn't that bad. And I wrote about it. And the title to it is A Demon in Ghost's Clothing. Which I love, okay? I do like that. If you don't know the expression, the expression actually goes a wolf in sheep's clothing and it's basically describing something that you thought wasn't bad but then turned out to be very negative or had a very negative impact on your life. It can be a person, it can be something. I edited this poem three times, I think, and I only had the first line, which is I've seen a demon and I'm its host, which I liked. I liked it and I thought, okay, I can just leave it at that. But I thought it had potential, so I wrote a little bit about it. So I'm just gonna read it to you. I've seen a demon and I'm its host. It lurked in the corner, it seemed like a ghost. But one night it took step after step, standing too close to my little bed. Night after night it now sits with me, while holding my hand, begging for the key. It's a prisoner in my room, and there's nothing I can do. It doesn't have a name or say from wherever it once came. All I know is that it's here to stay. I wonder who it belonged to before, or how it found its way through my door. There are a couple of things that I'm not fine with it yet, but for me it's a good representation of I had this realistic situation where I thought, okay, this isn't as bad. I could say, there was this thing in my life and I thought it wasn't bad, but it turned out to be the devil. I used it and tried to create an image, and what I hope is to always bring an image inside a person's head, to bring colors and creatures and 
people into the readers' heads. That's what I like doing. So when I read this poem, I think about a person, someone, a creature, anything, a presence, being in my room, and then taking step after step and coming closer, and now it sits on my bed and it doesn't go away. I want to write poetry that is accessible for everyone, that everyone understands it. But I also want to create these images. I want to use these stylistic devices that we learn in school, which I gotta say, I have a problem with. Because in school, you only learn that poetry is something that is annoying, intimidating, and first of all, you have to memorize the sh out of these stylistic devices that you don't even know enough about to be able to analyze them. And it's really crappy. The curriculum, at least in Germany, doesn't give you enough time to really talk about these things because a common thing that pupils always say is, yeah, but this uh, poet thought about this and this and that when they wrote this and this and that word. But most of the time you think that's not true. You say, well, this person just wrote these things and it rhymed and then they were done. They didn't want to tell us something very phenomenal or something. It's the same with analyzing a painting. You can say, I bet this red blob in the right corner um, symbolizes love. Or it can symbolize war and blood and, and, and heartbreak. Or you think, well, the painter just wanted to use red in the painting. It doesn't have anything to say. And that's the thing that happens when you learn and study something that is so expressive and that most of the time has that certain purpose that you think was not on purpose. When the curriculum wants you to learn flat things. And the meaning of this is you only learn these stylistic devices and you learn, okay, that's a metaphor, that's a simile, that's a juxtaposition and all that. But poetry is so much more than just these things. Those things are important and they're very interesting. But the problem is that you never learn how interesting these things are. You just learn them because you have to. You don't get an introduction of what poetry really conveys. And if I was a teacher and people would ask me what is poetry and I would, I would say, as I said in the beginning of the video, poetry is painting with words. It's an art form. And the problem with art in school is that it's not, at least in Germany, not funded enough, not important enough. Because when I was analyzing poetry in school, I thought it was beautiful, but I didn't think of it as art. I thought, okay, I have to write an introduction, a summary, an analysis, and a conclusion. That's what I thought, and that's very theoretical. It's important, but in order to really analyze a poem, you should be able to know what poetry is about and what poetry is for. That's where my problem really lies in, because people don't understand that poetry is so much more than just analyzing. You don't have to analyze a poem, but what I like doing is creating both of these things, accessibility, without losing the art in it. So I have a bunch of poems in this book that I would say, that's not the kind of poetry that I want to publish, that's not the kind of poetry that I want to stand behind and say, yeah, this is poetry, because honestly, some of this isn't poetry. But sometimes you just have a little thing in something that you wrote, and you can use that in order to continue, in order to make it something better. You guys sent me amazing prompts, and I'm so excited to try and use them now. I'm really nervous, and I can't say if it's gonna be good or not. We're gonna try this. Sophie's Bücherliebe sent me this prompt, which is called Fresh Air on a Rainy Day. And I love this. So, I'm gonna try writing something. <laughs> oh god. This is the challenge, writing something as fast as you can. And if I can't, that's fine. Oh, this is gonna be difficult. The problem is, I have so many things in my head, and then there's so much that I have nothing. It's like you have a blank page, and soon there's a bunch of, like, black fonted words put on that page and then the page is full, but then you have another blank page, which is not white anymore, but it's black now. You get what I'm saying? I hope you get what I'm saying. Okay, I want to add like one line and then I'm gonna finish this. This is gonna be a very short poem, but I believe that most of these are gonna be short. I got something. I'm not sure if I like it, but that's the exercise. That's exactly what I'm doing here. It's just finding the writing again, getting rid of writer's block. So this is called Fresh Air on a Rainy Day. After the thunder of the storm has passed, I hear the squeaking footsteps of a child. Into the puddles they jumped and danced. I was watching the air around me. It cleaned itself of warmth and became a cool light touch upon my skin. No more pressure that the sun has weighted us in. So, 
that's that's what I wrote. I like it. It's cute. I have this picture of a child in my head and it's like, and I love rain. I love going out when it's raining like really heavily like right now. It's heavily raining and it reminded me of the feeling that I had just yesterday because yesterday was a very hot day and with the rain at least here on the countryside there comes this cool air which I love, like it's fresh, it's cool, there's a certain smell of rain in the air and I love it but I wrote so much about the scent of rain that I wanted to change it up this time I think it's very clear, right? Okay, this is weird because I'm totally writing out of my comfort zone just reading things I have actually have no idea about but yeah Let's do something else. This was fun. Let's try something else. Alinchen, I hope I'm saying this right, send me these four keywords, which are traffic, time, exhaustion, and home. We're gonna try it. Three minutes. Oh God. Okay. Okay. This is interesting. Who knows? I'm calling this turn right and um, you're gonna see in a second why. I think I'm gonna read it. I know I'm gonna be late. So much time in the traffic I spend, it seems all I do is wait. Waiting to be home. Waiting to roam. Waiting to groan because I'm stuck again. Exhaustion holds me tight and I'm tired of waiting. I'm tired of turn right. As you can see, I love putting actual speech into my poetry. So like a different character saying something. And I actually really like this. So I'm gonna edit this more and maybe write a longer poem out of it. But this is what I can come up with in three minutes. The next one I'm gonna give myself a little bit more time for because there are a number of prompts that um, are in there. I got a lot of underwater themed prompts that I want to put together. So Emilia Lu, I hope I'm saying this right, said summer nights and the ocean. A Miss Le Cupcake, hi Yana, said blue mermaid ocean. Yana WSK or Yana hi said sunscreen. And my sister Meep said underwater. So I'm gonna try to make something out of that and I'm giving, I'm giving myself more time. also very short. I think I like it. So I don't know what to call it. It could be called underwater. I also cheated a little bit, but you will see that. Don't forget to use sunscreen. My mother always preached. Don't worry, I would say. I used plenty on a long summer day. When day was one by night and the blue turned black in the moonlight, I would wonder what was underwater if the ocean hid mermaids or sea monsters. That's what I can come up with in that short amount of time. But I would love to continue this because this first verse has this sort of childish energy for me and then it turns into something more fantastic, more um, imaginary and really is a good representation of what I was like as a kid and what I still am like. So I really like this. I would definitely continue this because I don't think it's done yet. And I cheated a little bit with the summer nights. I cut them in half and said summer night. I hope you can forgive me. And that's what I was able to come up with. And I think we're doing two more and then we're gonna cut it because that's this is actually really hard. But I'm gonna keep all the prompts. If you wanna see a part two, then we're gonna do that again. Okay, let's do a sad one. Lina Maria Fan gave me these keywords, which is nobody cares, alone, all eyes on me, crying, pain, feeling nothing. And I don't think I'm gonna put another one to that. Put in a cave, which my sister gave me, and silhouette. I'm gonna try this. What I like about this is that the nobody cares, alone, all eyes on me, crying, pain, feeling nothing. There are two categories, right? You have this all eyes on me, pain, crying, and then you have this nobody cares, alone, and feeling nothing. And that's, that's what you feel when you are depressed and anxious at the same time. And that's really hard to deal with. I'm gonna try to come up with something. I'm gonna call this a silhouette in a cave because that's how I started it. Uh, let's read it. A silhouette sits in a cave alone, 
crying because it has no home. It escaped the world with eyes all over and thought the pain would grow older. And thought the pain would grow older. But now it's just a fainted shadow. It will be gone with a simple blow. Nobody cares and nobody's here. Nothing but the sharpness of fear. And even that will vanish until nothing's left to feel and safe from the lonely silhouette in the cave. I like this one. I changed some things. For example, I didn't say all eyes on me. I wrote, um, it escaped the world with eyes all over. It is something that I felt with my anxiety slowly affecting me less and less and then turning into a depression when I was feeling very bad. It's very simple, not a lot of, not a lot of imagery here. But it's clear, and it, at least it's saying something. Now, last one. I have a lot of themes left, I'm so sorry that I can't use all of them. I'm gonna use these three. I'm gonna use the word balance, which was suggested by my mom. Thank you, mom. Magical forest, which um, was suggested by my older sister. Thank you, Clara. And peach, England, which was recommended by a friend of mine. Thank you, Norik. I have no idea. I don't know how I can put these all together, but we're gonna try. This is difficult. This was, this is such a strange one, guys. Okay, I'm just gonna read it to you. Again, the keywords were balance, magical forest, peach, and England, which uh, was stupid of me to put together, but it was a challenge and I took it. Okay, let's, let's read this. I was a stranger in this land. England was big and broad, and I didn't know where to stand. At houses and landscapes, I awed. But it was strange to me, not like the sweet taste of a peach, more like a sour apple that I tasted when I saw all these new faces. As a pixies and trolls in a magical forest, Balance of beauty and pain was promised. New in everything I had yet to learn, but for now I lived and let that be my future's concern. <laughs> so the magical forest was I think the biggest thing, but also what's with the peach? If I were to read this and I didn't know that it was mine, I would be like, huh? How, does the, how do these things fit together? And sometimes things just don't fit together. I would definitely edit this and maybe use this first and maybe use every single verse that I wrote for a different poem. Actually, I kind of like this. I like each individual verse, but I don't like it together. So we could call it poem one, two, three. I don't know. Good. I filmed for two hours now, maybe more than that. And I'm done. This was fun. It was different than I thought it would be. Um, it was challenging. I really hope you enjoyed it because it was... Again, it was it was so much fun and I will definitely write the prompts down that I did not use. I will definitely do this again if you want me to. I love talking about poetry. Let me know what your thoughts are. Who are your favorite poets? What kind of poetry do you like reading? Are you interested in a more in-depth video about my certain poetry book where I really go into my poetry book and edit some things with you and not only read like one or two poems that I wrote? Let me know. I'm very insecure. If you want to read more of my poetry, old and new, I'm gonna delete the old ones very soon, <laughs> then follow me on my Instagram account right here, there's my poetry account as well, and I will maybe post some of the ones that I wrote now and tag the ones that um, so nicely gave me some prompts and gave me keywords and got me out of my, what's it called? Writer's block! Yay! My favorite. Let's let's go through them, and then I'm gonna choose my favorite. I really like the last one that I wrote because it's so weird. And what I really want to do is write a bunch of weird poems that make zero sense but have essentially very important messages. I liked Underwater. I want to continue that. I think my favorite is Silhouette in a Cave because um, it's so relatable for me, and I like it. It's simple. Not a lot, but a little bit of imagery, and that's that's that. I like Turn Right. I think I like all of them, actually, and I think all of them have potential. And that's what I love doing. Writing something, and then later, when I use it in a book, or if I want to post it, 
I edit them and see what I can make out of it. Okay, this is it. I hope you liked it, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up. Please comment your thoughts on this uh, new topic, on this format, on this video down below, please. Comment down below what you would like to see next, and also let me know what I can improve, and what you like about poetry, or what you don't like, or what you think is a common misconception of poetry. Okay, I'm gonna go now, but if you want to, and if you haven't subscribed yet, then please do. Please? And don't forget to click the little bell next to the subscription button. I upload twice a week on Thursday and Sunday, and if I can make it, as always, follow me on my Instagram. I update you guys in case I don't make it. Okay, I'm gonna eat dinner now. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye! And I also didn't use these things. Ow! <laughs> ah! Slammed the book against my collarbone. That hurts. Inglis was big and Inglis, yes. Has it stopped raining? It stopped raining. <laughs> what? This is not what I want. Fit. Okay, I think that's it. That's enough. Bye. I love you guys.